Hello, Booktube. It's Peg. I am back again in the waning light of day to um, revel in some recent finds in my, as I like to call it, the History Vault, otherwise known as the Garage. Or if, if you're from England or in England, the Garage. Um, as I mentioned in one of my last videos, um, we are doing some reorganizing in the garage, Martine and I, and uh, I took my glasses off because I am not reading descriptions on each of these books. I'm, it's a show and tell merely, so I decided to take some glasses off, uh, let the old schnoz breathe a bit. Anyway, um, so I found a stack, you know, and I have to credit Martine. It was her idea. She's like, you should pull out some of the books that you're just so tickled to find. Um, oh, this light is so strong on my face right now. You do not need that. Okay. Just had to dim it a bit. So I was like, you know, that's a great idea. Let me go ahead and just, as I'm coming across things, pull them out. I think my booktube friends would love seeing them. And of course, I forgot one of them that I was going to show. Darn it. Um, hold, please. <sighs> okay. We are all ready to go. I went and grabbed that book real quick. So, I've got about, oh gosh, maybe 15 books here. So I'm just not going to, I really don't want to make a 30-minute video. So we're just going to try to roll through things really, really quickly. Um, but a, a couple of the books that I found, I was like, hmm. I was thinking of donating, and then I realized a couple people might be interested. So, I'm going to start off with... Now, this is a creme de la creme right here. I know who I'm giving this book to. You know who you are. Um, this book, I got by accident. I had ordered a used book through the third-party system on Barnes & Noble. And the book arrived, and I, well, uh, I thought it was the book. I opened it up. I'm like, what the hell is this? You know, this is not the book I ordered. Um, and it was a... F <laughs> I should have been, like, tickled because I am a Folio Society junkie. But I don't know this author, and I wasn't really interested in what it proclaimed. Like, it. here we go. Look at this. I mean, it's lovely. It's kind of old, kind of got the dusty look. But someone sent this to me. I didn't get the book I ordered. This is the autobiography of Ben... Ben, Benvenuto Cellini. I had to look him up. It's a very, it's in great condition. <laughs> so I wrote them. I said, you sent me the wrong book. They're like, no, we didn't. And so they didn't seem to understand. I'm like, I didn't order this. And they're like, we didn't send this to you. And I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> so it, it was a complete, you know, I didn't get the book I needed. And, uh, but... <laughs> It's a perfectly beautiful book. It's in great condition. Um, apparently, this guy was a s artist, a sculptor. Uh, Benvenuto Cellini was born in 1500 and wrote his autobiography at intervals during the years 1558 to 66 and died in 1571. Um, I don't know. If it's you know if it's mostly about art and stuff, you know I'm probably gonna <laughs> I'm probably gonna wish I hadn't given it away. I just have so much to read right now, and I know that this person would really love this, so I'm gonna you know do my good deed and send this along. So, the autobiography of Benvenuto Cellini. Look at that. It smells really great. Mmm, got that old paper smell. Um, okay, so the more I look at it, the more I'm <laughs> wanting to hang on to it, but I, I'm going to resist. I'm resisting that temptation. I can be just a little pack rat with these books. Um, okay, so passing this along, spreading the love, paying it forward, as it were. Ah, oh, the next book I found, I thought of my friend Kara, Kara Middleton, you know, well, you know who you are. I just said what your name is. Yeah. <laughs> um, she is also all about Russian history and uh, uh, just that whole era in Soviet Union as well. Um, 
This is called They Fought for the Motherland. Now, maybe you've already read this, Kara. Let me know if you haven't. And if you're interested, let me know and DM me. And uh, I can send this to you. I'm happy to do it. Uh, they Fought for the Motherland, Russia's Women Soldiers in World War I and the Revolution by Lori S. Stoff. Um, it is a book club edition, so I hope you don't mind that. Um, but it's, it's brand new. I don't, I am sure I read this. I just don't remember much about it. Uh, this was printed, this was published in 2006 by University Press of Kansas. There's it. So, um, yeah, Kara, if you're interested, let me know. DM me. Okay, so, oh, and then you guys, this was a fabulous find. So, just, oh, I'd say late last year, I started collecting hardcore or getting into, again, collecting the New York Review of Books classics, those paperbacks, you know, with all the colorful spines, and then just, they just reprint a lot of really um, obscure stuff sometimes, and or intellectual classics, and I've, I, I have accumulated a ton of them, um, but I had forgotten that many, many years ago, I had bought a few of them, and it didn't really occur to me then that I was gonna be forming a collection but recently as I was putting out these books on the shelves down here I was like oh and then another book referenced one of these books and I was like I know I have this I know I have it in storage somewhere and I know like I wanted to read this one about um, the Algerian war and I'm like I know I bought that um, I just have to find it well I stumbled across three beautiful New York Review of Book Classics that I am putting back on the shelf, taking out of their their little uh, uh, unintentional exile. Um, so I was so thrilled to find a Savage War of Peace. This is the one I was really looking for. Um, Algeria, 1954 to 1962 um, by Alistair Horn, with a new preface by the author. So, uh I was so happy to find that again. And then I found The Thirty Years War by C.V. Wedgwood, uh, forward by Anthony Grafton. So, yeah, some of these are coming out of storage. Some are just going to go back in uh, until I, you know, want to reread them or whatever. But, um, all right. Oh, and here's another military history stuff. This is coming back out. This is Defeat, Napoleon's Russian Campaign by Philippe Paul de Seguier. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I have a problem with French words. Fariba, help me out, man. <laughs> I need some help on pronunciation. Um, introduction by Mark Danner. It's a little smaller version. Uh, again, I'm not going to read the descriptions. If you guys are interested, you know, Google's only a few uh, finger taps away. Um, oh, yeah, so and I came across this one as well, and I was like, oh, damn it. I've been meaning to read this, and I had put it away, so still need to read it. Um, it's put out by a publisher that I enjoy. Some of their, many of their books, some of them, but um, ISI, Intercollegiate Studies Institute. Um, and this is The Devil Knows Latin, Why America Needs the Classical Tradition by E. Christian Kopf. So, uh, ah, it looks pretty good. Um, I already got my bookmark in there. History Camp. This is uh, this was before the pandemic, though. Unfortunately, it won't be held in Boston, I don't think. But anyway, um, History Camp. Got this from the history list. Uh, good people doing good work. Getting the, the word out about history. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. This one, he just does a bunch of different art or essays. Um, the Enlightenment Project, Federalism and Christianity... Uh, the Classics, uh, The Founding, and American Creativity, Russell Kirk, Bohemian Tory, interesting. Um, yeah, so a lot of this looks really interesting. The Devil Knows Latin. So pick, uh, So I saw that one. I'm going to pull this one back out. Um, a couple of these other ones I did pull out, thinking, leave them out, find space, because I want to read them. Um... So this is historical fiction, and this is the first of his novels in the, uh, oh, I think it's in the Gordianus series of books. And this is Stephen Saylor. I'm sure you guys have all heard of Stephen Saylor. Um, he's written, you know, tons of ancient Roman, um, ancient Rome, the history set in ancient Rome. And this is Roman blood. 
a novel of ancient Rome. This is the first book in the Gordianus um, series, which goes on forever. I think there's probably 20, 25 books. I don't know. But um, so I pulled this one back out. I'm just, you know, I want to get back into, uh, I need to finish my Bernard Cornwell books, actually, you know, I get caught up on my Saxon tales, but I'd like to start reading like my mystery historical fiction set further back in the time of Rome. Um, and I know he's just, I've, I've read some of his, um, his shorter stories that were then later, uh, the stories about him and his nephew, which they were first published in like, I think, Alfred Hitchcock Mystery Magazine, um, and I really enjoyed them, and then they, I found out later they were part of a, a book that was coming out, one of his, um, in hardcover. It was a collected tales of, of Gordianus and his nephew, and um, I can't remember the names of them, but anyway, I thought, well, maybe I should go back to the very beginning. So I found this one. Oh, and then I saw this one, and I'm like, oh, I must show this to my audience. So for a time in my life, and I, I would like to revisit it again, um, maybe not right now, but I was a huge Virginia Woolf, and I, I like Virginia Woolf, I like some of her work, um, but I was really intrigued by the Bloomsbury set. I got every book I could on Bloomsbury. Uh, any book on anyone related to, you know, the, not, not related by blood, but just anyone in that set even tangentially, I would, I would get uh, books on them. Um, and then I saw the movie Carrington, and I was really intrigued. And it was a great movie, although extremely depressing. But I have the letters of Lytton Strachey, uh, edited by Paul Levy. This, is, this, was, this was put out by Farrar, Strauss, and Giroux. Um, this came out, and it's a hefty book here. This is a keeper. Um, I love collections of letters um, by, you know, intellectuals and just writers, authors. Uh, maybe not so much sculptors. Sorry, Benevuto. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Cellini. Um, you know, I like looking at art. I just, for some reason, art history, and it just has never appealed to me. It's probably because I just have no artistic sense whatsoever. I mean, you know, I can put an outfit together, but as far as like, I can't draw worth a dang. And uh, you think I would like that. But anyway, this was published in 2005 by the Strachey Trust. And there's a lot of letters in here. So, and Lytton Strachey, for those who are not in the know, wrote Eminent Victorians. Uh, his portraits of several of uh, Victorian personalities and his, you know, historical personages. And he was well known for that. It was a bestseller in his time. Um, but uh, yeah, torrid, uh, not torrid. It was an unconventional love affair with the painter Dora Carrington. And in the movie, uh, Dora was played by Emma Thompson. And help me out. <laughs> Straight she was played by... Jonathan Price. I am so proud of myself that I could remember. Um, it was fairly good. It was fairly good. Uh, all right, so let me hang on. I got a few more down here. Oh, yes. Um, speaking of Virginia Woolf, so I discovered this book, and I still have this... <laughs> Barnes and Noble, Barnes and Noble um, bargain sticker on it. Um, let me know if you guys just think you guys think this book is interesting. This is see, seeing together. Uh, hang on, seeing together friendship between the sexes in English writing from Mill to Wolf by Victor Luftig, and I will try to get the sticker off of here. Um, I will quickly read this one. Um, friendship between the sexes is notoriously difficult to describe. Seeing Together examines the efforts of some of England's key writers, from poets to propagandists, during a period when mere friendship came to seem intensely important, when discussion of professional relations between men and women came to touch upon a troubling network of sexual, social, and political dynamics. Among the authors 
uh, discussed are John Stuart Mill, Robert Browning, George Eliot, uh, Thomas Hardy, Henry James, Joseph Conrad, D.H. Lawrence, and Virginia Woolf. And this was put out by Stanford University Press. Um, so now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, actually, this might be interesting. Let me know if you guys think it looks good. I even have a bookmark. <laughs> I attempted to start it, I guess. I don't know what the hell's going on. What's going on with me? Um, let me put these down. How y'all doing? How y'all feeling out there tonight? Let me just pause for a little sip. Aren't these cute? These are just like little teasers. They just, they leave you wanting more. Kind of like life, you know? I don't know. Okay. Oh yes, so one of, a uh, couple of my bins out there Tons of theology books, tons of uh, books on Christianity or history, church history. And I was looking for this book oh, a few months ago because a book I was reading mentioned this work. And I'm like, son of a biscuit. I think I had to make room uh, <laughs> when Martine um, moved in to, you know, get some of these books in some storage. And this was one of them. But I found it and it's coming back out to stay. Um, this is Christianity and Liberalism by J. Gresham Machen, or Macon, New Edition. And it's a foreword by Carl R. Truman. It's a little slim little volume. This is put out by, oh, a uh, very well-known uh, religious publisher, um, William B. Erdman's publishing company out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, my home state. What? All right. Um, the, I'll just read this one because, you know, I'm sure many of you have not heard of this guy. This classic defense of Orthodox Christianity, written to counter the liberalism that arose in the early 1900s, establishes the importance of scriptural doctrine and contrasts the teachings of liberalism and orthodoxy on God and man, the Bible, Christ, salvation, and the church. J. Gresham um, Macon's Christianity and Liberalism has remained relevant through the years ever since its original publication in 1923. It was named one of the top 100 books of the millennium by World Magazine and one of the top 100 books of the 20th century by uh, Christianity Today. So, kind of looking forward to getting into that. Sorry for the glare. You know, when it gets really dark out and I've got all these extra lights on to try to light the light the set as it were i get the glare on these uh, soft glossy covers okay so here's something else i want to share i'm at 18 minutes so let's see if i can get through these last okay so i wasn't able to join in with the wolf hall read along many months ago which i wanted to do and i intended to do but other things happened so i wasn't able to but i've always wanted to read the the uh, the books and of course, with the new book that came out, um, I wanted to do it. I had this crappy uh, book club paperback ripoff edition of uh, Wolf Hall that I just did not want to spend time. I tried reading it. I'm like, I, I just hate the feel of this book. It's just cheap and gross, and I don't like it. I want a hardcover. So it took me a while to find a used hardcover that... I ordered one and it arrived and it was just beat up all to hell. It was one of those bad experiences of used books that you're, you know, you see on people on booktube, you know, you know, showing like this, this sucked. This is not as described. So I would return it, get my refund and just forget about it for a while. Well, recently I finally got a great used copy like new, bueno, perfect. So it's upstairs in the library room. And I knew that I had the second one in hardcover already, but it was in storage because I bought this book at a time that I didn't even know about this author. Um, it was a book sale going on at a, um, a little company next door to my company at our offices while well, we still had offices there in the, where I work. Obviously, I'm not, not going to say the name of town, but... Um, um, the people selling this did not realize what they, I mean, they had, it was a first edition and they sold it for a dollar. Um, but just seeing the sticker, I'm like, oh, it, it might be the second volume, but 
you know, because I wasn't even aware of the first volume, but I bought it. So I, I got this for a dollar back in the day. It's a beautiful brand new deckled edged first edition of Hillary Mantel's Bring Up the Bodies. That big fat glossy gold sticker went over the Man Booker Prize. So, knowing that I found this, I'm like, now you know what you got to do. And it was half off on Amazon. So, yes, folks, I have now the trilogy. I bought uh, Hillary Mantel's The Mirror and The Light. Um, beautiful deckle edge. So, really, the only used copy that I have is the Wolf Hall, but it's, it's, a, it's in really good condition. So, I'm thinking this winter, as I'm sheltering in place... And we got the, you know, the winds of, um, uh, you know, the, the howling winds of the Rocky Mountains, you know, barreling down on the Front Range. I can curl up with uh, Wolf Hall and bring up the bodies and the mirror and the light. So I'm very tickled. I was, I was, I was happy that I found this one so easily. Um, because, I was, again, I was making space at the time in my life where I was like, okay, I've got to just get a bunch of these into bins in the garage to make space in my life, which I'm so happy I did. Okay. <laughs> I'm such a softy. Oh, okay. If I have time, I'll show you this. It was more of a... Oh, this is, this is funny. Martine's not here to boo... <laughs> So maybe it's good that I'm doing this. I came across this book, <laughs> which I still haven't read. You're going to be shocked that I haven't read this yet. Um, mostly because I heard it got not as good review as his uh, series on Scott Harvath. But this was... <laughs> Are you ready? Oh, yeah. yeah. Who is it? It's Brad Thor. It's Brad Thor. This is the Athena Project, a thriller. Now, you'd think that I would have been all over... The, and I, well, I bought this brand new because I was like, I don't know why I didn't get around to it, but I am going to get to it. It's, he wrote a story about an all-female uh, counterterrorism group, uh, Delta Force, you know, and it's, they're, all, they're all women, and um, Casey, Erickson, Rhodes, and Cooper. These are all really unlikely names except for Casey. <laughs> but hey, I'll take it. I don't care. Oh, I see. No, I'm sorry. These are their last names. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. We got Gretchen, Julie, Megan, Alex. All right. So yeah, they're you know taking down bad guys and kicking ass, and it's a Brad Thor book. So when I saw when I <laughs> when I pulled this out the bin, I said, "Oh, honey, look what I found." Oh, you should have seen and heard everything that was said. Um, so yeah, I'm pulling this out. Brad Thor has a brand new book out called Near Dark. Um, I'm thinking about starting because I'm, I, you know, I'm like six, five, I'm like five books in from the beginning of his series. But I have a few of his hardbacks from his most recent releases that I'm thinking, and he says he writes the, his Scott Harvath, um, like spy thriller stuff, um, so that anyone can jump in at any time. You don't need to have read it from the beginning. So I might just kind of take a little leap forward to try to catch up and then pick up Near Dark real soon. So anyway, I found a... Red Thor. <laughs> okay, guys. Yeah, I'm almost there. So uh, 23 minutes. Here we go. Oh, I forgot. Oh, okay, this should have been along with my other New York review of books um, that I just showed you, which I've now put on the floor. But I found Seduction and Betrayal by Elizabeth Hardwick. Introduction by Joan Didion. Um, I'm not sure why I bought this, because I, I don't know who she is. Well, I know now, after watching a lot of booktube and um, just reading, uh, watching a lot more fiction booktube, and you know, people talking about the classics, I've learned a lot from you guys. You're great. Thank you for educating me in a subject that uh, you know I've... You know, a lot of these writers I've never heard of before, and uh, I've heard of them now through you. And But I, I'm not sure. It must have been like a flash sale. And let's see. What about this? Oh, this is what appealed to me. Uh, the novelist and essayist Elizabeth Hardwick is one of contemporary America's most brilliant writers. And in this book, she considers the careers of women writers as well as the larger question of the presence of women in literature. Um, 
and it is her most passionate and concentrated work of criticism. A gallery of unforgettable portraits. Oh, this is why I bought it, because I'm a Virginia Woolf, you know, freak. Um, of Virginia Woolf and Zelda Fitzgerald, Dorothy Wordsworth, and Jane Carlyle. Oh, and I just recently <laughs> recently have been getting into learning more about Jane Carlyle and Thomas Carlyle. So this is, uh, this is yeah, this is staying out. Um, as well as a provocative reading of such works as Wuthering Heights, Hedda Gabler, and the poems of Sylvia Plath, Seduction and Betrayal is a virtuoso performance, a major writer's reckoning with the relations between men and women, women in writing, and writing in life. That's why I got it. It's not a, it's not a novel, it's, it's a book of essays. And that makes more sense to me, that's why I bought it. So, it's coming out, it's joining the collection. What? And I'm so glad I found this book, because I almost rebought it um, off of one of, uh, I think, either Book Outlet, I think bookoutlet.com. But I already had it. The big fan of Robert D. Kaplan's work. Uh, I've mentioned him before. Um, he's written uh, The Revenge of Geography most recently, uh, or and The Return of Marco Polo. I have it over here. He's written Asia's Cauldron. Uh, he wrote The Coming Anarchy back in the 90s, which blew me away and introduced me to geopolitical like history and forecasting. Just fabulous. I, and you know his travel writings, fabulous. So I've been amassing a collection of Robert D. Kaplan books, and I thought that I didn't have this one, but I actually did. Um, and I don't know why I put it into a bin out. In the... I must have been desperate. I was just <laughs> just trying to make space. <laughs> um, because, yes, I have uh, books in every room, but I needed to make more room. So a lot of them had to go into storage until we can get a house. And I envision a big basement lined with bookshelves. And everything will be taken out of storage then. But anyway, this is Balkan Ghosts, A Journey Through History. So I was really happy to get that. Now, I am going to join this with the other um, Kaplan books that I have. Oh, to the right of my uh, crystal cross there. So um, I'm going to get all of his books together on a shelf because he's just a fabulous writer and I enjoy his work immensely. Um... Yeah, so that's a great history of the Balkans right there that I can't wait to get to. And then, I don't know, for some weird reason, I have a perfectly beautiful Everyman's Library hardcover of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. <laughs> I don't know why I put that out there. Uh, so this is coming out and going and getting reshelved. Uh, this, was, this is unread. I have not read Frankenstein, if you can believe it. And it's about time to, speaking of you know, seduction and betrayal, talking about the women writers of the ages, of the, you know, recent um, last couple of uh, centuries or whatever, but um, Mary Shelley should have it. Okay, so 28 minutes. Oh, yeah, okay, so this is just a, um, and then I found something for my own, like, spiritual, uh, this is like a, it's a workbook. I'm kind of doing my own work right now on stuff, so I'm not sure if I'm going to pull this out and work through it, but this is a Spiritual Disciplines Companion, Bible Studies and Practices to Transform Your Soul by Jan Johnson. Now, it's just, uh, you know, I like it because it has, uh, it's got the daily readings, you know, and um, I might keep this out, but I, I kind of have my own, um, I might do this after I finish my study on the book of John, which I'm reading commentary for as well as reading the Bible with it simultaneously. And I'm, all, and I'm also doing an online course on 15 essential uh, biblical uh, Bible te texts. So, all right, guys. Well, this is a little bit of something for you from the History Vaults. I hope you enjoyed it. Just under 30 minutes. I have seconds left, so I'm going to wrap this up. Let me know what you think of any of these books. Of course, I love hearing your comments. And um, until next time, BookTube, stay hale and hearty and healthy, which I think is the same thing. But anyway, take care, BookTube. Bye.